Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. This week's project is going to be a lot about experimentation. Experimentation with color and also experimentation with different tools that can create texture in watercolors. I tend to enjoy working with a lot of really bright colors, but certain color combinations, for instance, red and blue, even though our, those are colors that I use in a lot of my paintings, I have never used them alone. And so they mix well together to create purple. And I'm going to try to create a painting with this. I'm a little unsure how it's going to go. Uh, I really love red and I really love blue. They're pretty bold colors, both of them. And they do mix well to create a, a nice purple. But purple is a color that I sometimes struggle using in artwork. It's a color I really love, but for whatever reason, I struggle with using it. And red, even though it's a color I also really love, can be very bold and in your face. And sometimes if there's too much red in a painting, I think it can be a bit overwhelming. So I'm going to try to achieve the right amount of balance, I guess, in using these colors. Um, but this is all about experimentation. So I'm not sure how it's going to go. I'm going to use some things that I have never used in a video before, not things that I've never used, but just never in a video, just to show you also how to create texture in different ways. And really watercolors do lend themselves quite well to creating a variety of different textures. Well, maybe texture is not really the correct word. Um, it's more like creating marks because there's not going to be texture that you actually feel. It's more of a visual effect, so probably more so marks. So the first I'm, thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some stretch wrap. Um, that's like cling wrap. And I'm going to put it over the painting over the wet surface and you'll see that it's gonna already, when you first apply it, it's gonna start to create some pretty interesting marks in the paint. And so I'll just do it on one half of the paper just to show you the difference between that. And I'll also apply some fine grain table salt to the other side of the paper just so you can see how different they react on the paper. Once the salt is applied, the next step is simply to let the paper dry completely. So as you can see, once the paper is dry and the cling wrap and salt have been removed, some really interesting textures have been created on both sides. One thing I'm noticing that I don't tend to like is that my colors have remained very light uh, and so I like to intensify them and I'm gonna go over the colors again this time I'm going to apply cling wrap after I'm done applying more paint I'm going to go over again with cling wrap on the right side and then I'll apply salt on the left side to see if I can layer these textures Remember, I'm experimenting. I'm not 100% sure how this is all going to go. I'm trying to also use the colors in areas where I had previously only applied blue. I'm trying to go over the area with a little bit of red to see if when I put the cling wrap on the paper and the salt, if it's going to lift some of the paint and create some more interesting textures after I've removed both the salt and the cling wrap.
The second layer of cling wrap and salt was able to create quote unquote texture and my colors are a little bit more intense so I'm really liking that and I feel a need to create some contrast at this point and so I've decided to come in with my circle guide I'm going to create some circles and then I'm going to paint around the circles um, to create a little bit more balance and contrast in the shapes in the background because right now the background looks lovely but it's a little bit busy and I want to sort of tame it a little bit and I think adding a little bit more color contrast will help with that. Initially, I was thinking of coming in with a darker shade of blue than the one I had used to mix with my red, but then I thought it would create more balance or more coherence in the painting, I guess is, is the right, the, the best word or the best way to describe it, to create more co coherence in the painting if I use the same blue on top of the colors that were already there. Um, the, so the same blue as the blue that I applied, that I first applied on the paper. And I think this is gonna be okay. Um, I really love that blue and I really love that red, but I'm not 100% sure I'm all that crazy about how I think there's it's too much of it right now it just feels like too much but it's okay I'm gonna keep working on balancing out the composition as I'm going along so please bear with me we'll get there it's probably also a good thing for me to remind myself at this point that this project was all about experimentation so I'm experimenting with things I don't usually work with. I don't usually work with cling wrap. I tend to find that the textures created by the cling wrap can be a bit busy. They're very interesting, but they can be a bit busy. So I have tended not to use them very often, even though I do find them very interesting. And you know, I'm in, I'm also working only with blue and red at this point, and they're both colors I really love, but they're not colors that I use alone very often and so it may be that I'm out of my comfort zone so it's good to when you're doing something new like this or you're trying new things and, and experimenting to be compassionate with yourself to remind yourself that it's okay to not be sure about the process that it's okay to feel some uncertainty as you're going along that that's just a normal part of experimenting and playing and trying to do new things. So I added some blue around the shapes to create some contrast. Um, in the painting and I do feel that it might have been better for me to go with a little bit of a darker blue than the color I applied but again I'm experimenting so I'm gonna try to stick with it and instead of going in again with another layer of color I'm gonna start to add some details using my white pen now the last time I used my white pen over dark ink it seemed to, the ink didn't seem to be as opaque as I thought it should be. And so I thought in this part of the process that I would be adding some white ink that would sort of create a very faint swirly design in the background, but that's not what's happening here. For whatever reason, this time when I'm using my pen, the ink is remaining very opaque over the colors I've applied and and that's fine so I've started this process I'm just gonna keep going with it because this is what my intuition invited me to do I'm gonna keep going with it and if at some point I feel like I need to soften those white lines that I'm asked that I'm currently creating I know exactly how I'll do it 
Right now, the swirls I'm creating in between the lines are very bright and they're sort of taking away from the shapes that I've created. And this is because the shapes don't have a lot of contrast with the background just yet. So I'm gonna keep working on creating that contrast. I'm first of all gonna finish creating those swirly lines and I'm happy that I'm creating them here at this step in the process because eventually I want them to be in the background. And when I start to create contrast around my shapes, I'll be going over some of these swirly lines and so they will start to take a step back in the painting. Using my brush pen, I'm going to add some black ink to delineate my circle shapes. And because the ink, of course, is darker than the rest of the painting, that's also going to create some contrast between the shapes and the background. By just adding a little bit of darkness around the circles, I already have been able to create quite a bit more contrast between the shapes and the background. But I want to make the shape stand out a little bit more and I'm gonna use some stippling to go around all the different circles to help make them pop out a little bit more from the background. At this point, my white swirls have been drying for a while 
and they should be relatively set but I'm gonna go over them with a bit of water on a uh, flat brush and the paint that's in the background watercolor is not a permanent medium so when I'm moving my flat brush around on the paper it's going to lift some of that watercolor paper uh, watercolor and it's going to help to move some of that color over the swirls and it's going to make them step back into the background a little bit more i also think this ink is not completely waterproof and so it helps to blend those white lines a little bit by just going over the lines with some clear water and a flat brush. I am however being careful not to brush too too much because I don't want to make those swirls completely disappear. I just want them to step back a little bit so that they're not taking as much, uh, grabbing as much attention I guess as they are. I want my circles to be the attention grabbers in this painting. Red and blue work very well together and they created this beautiful purple that also works really well with the red and the blue but they don't create a lot of contrast for each other and that's because they're both cool colors and I think I need to warm things up a little bit and so to do that I'm going to add some gold. Gold is a complementary color. Um, it's yellow I guess in, in hue and I think it'll go really well with these colors, it'll really help to make my circles pop by adding some gold. So I'll just add some gold around the rim of the circles. I want to try and protect the center of the circles as much as possible at this point because I created those lovely textures at the beginning and I want some of those textures to still be showing through especially in the circles. And so I will only do the perimeter of the circles with the gold but already Having just started to apply this gold, I can see that it is going to provide a really lovely contrast. Et voila! There's a huge contrast now. And I think it was actually really necessary to bring that contrast into the painting to make it more interesting. When I'm not quite sure if I'm done with a painting or not, I usually like to remove the tape and have another look at the painting to see if there's anything different I could do to make it more pleasing to my eyes. And so that's what I'm doing at this point.
And after taking another look at the painting without the tape, I've decided that I want to add yet a little bit more contrast using some black ink and my dotting tool around my circles. Now that I'm done with this little experimental piece, I can actually say that I really like how it turned out. I love the fact that the background is contrasting with the texture of the circles. Those little white swirly lines are a little bit more subdued with having applied water over them and pulled some of that color on top of them. And that black around the circle, real the circles really helps to make them pop more. So I really like that. Experimenting like this is a wonderful way to spark inspiration. And I hope you can also give yourself a chance to play and experiment as well. And see how it can help you in your own creative practice. Thank you again for making the time to join me on this journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!